Welcome to Pack Your Bag with the Camera Swag. This is the game where you prove your camera carrying knowledge. If you're able to make it through all three rounds, you will prove yourself to be a camera carrying pro. There is a skill to traveling well. When you add in camera gear, you have to be even more thoughtful. What will you need? What do you need to bring? What do you need to bring it in? I'm getting ready for a trip to Washington, D.C., and I'm bringing camera gear, and I would like to share my thoughts with you. So, question number one. Which camera body am I going to bring? First of all, let me give you some context. So, I'm going to Washington, D.C. I'm flying up um, with a company. I'm going to be doing their social media and I'm also going to be taking some pictures of them for their website as well. One more thing that's actually really important is I'm going to have to do a Zoom call up in Washington when I get there. So for all of these reasons, it helped me to pick which camera that I wanted to bring. I had three choices. So I have the Canon R5, the Canon R6 Mark II, and I also have a Fujifilm XS10. The camera that I chose, the Canon R6 Mark II. And why? Well, the first reason is everything that I'm shooting is going to be either for social media or for a website. So which means I'm not gonna need 45 megapixels. 24 megapixels is going to be more than enough for everything that I'm going to be doing. The Canon R6 Mark II has two card slots, so it's gonna help me stay organized. I like to shoot my pictures on one card, my video on another, so that when I'm going through and calling my work, I know exactly where to find everything. Also, something that I need to make a video about it. The Canon R6 Mark II is plug and play when you want to make it a webcam. So I'm gonna use it actually for my Zoom call so I can have that crispy image on my um, video call. The reason I didn't choose the XS10, the Fujifilm, is it's just unreliable. I've had cards fail on it. I've recorded videos on it and it failed to record to the card. I don't have time for that. This is gonna be a professional trip, so I need professional gear. It is a great camera, but I just can't take the chance. I'm not taking the R5 because I don't need 45 megapixels. And also I will not need 120 frames per second slow motion for this trip. So for those reasons, the Canon R6 Mark II is gonna fulfill all of my needs on this trip. Question number two, which lenses do I bring? So for context, let me tell you what I'm gonna be doing. So first of all, I'm gonna be shooting people, I'm gonna be recording people, I'm gonna be recording a presentation, and because I'm in DC in my personal time, I wanna take some pictures of some landmarks and some buildings and do some architectural photography. So for all of these reasons, I chose three lenses to bring with me. So first of all, I'm bringing the RF 15-35 to 2.8. I will use that for a lot of my video work. And also, you know, it zooms out to 15 millimeters. I can get um, the architectural photography I want when I go sightseeing. I'm bringing that lens with me to make sure that I get all of these beautiful images from Washington, D.C. Now, for my portrait work, I'm going to use the 50 millimeter 1.2. RF, baby, RF. So for all of the social media pictures that I'm gonna do, portraits, headshots, I'm gonna use the 50 on this trip to do. And finally, I'm going to use the 35 millimeter RF, the 1.8 version. And people ask me, well, if you're bringing a 15 to 35, why do you still shoot the 35? One little trick it has up its sleeve is the 35 millimeter is also a macro lens. So I have some products that I'm gonna be shooting on a trip and I will be using the 35 millimeter to shoot product photography. Also, when I'm going out to dinner and I'm bringing my camera with me and just for some light shots, that will probably be the lens that I'll put on the camera just so it has that smaller profile. The last question, what bag am I gonna carry all of this in? So the context is I have to fly to Washington, D.C. I already have a carry-on bag with my clothes, so 
I need a camera bag that's going to be my personal item on the plane. So I need something that's very small, small enough to fit under the seat in front of me. Because of these reasons, the camera bag that I chose is the Provoke Light. Yep, that's right, the Wondered Provoke Light. That's the bag that I'm bringing with me. It is an 11 liter bag, but it's going to bring all of the gear that I just mentioned. Camera body, one body, three lenses. They all fit comfortably. Also, I'm bringing a few more things. Because I'm doing video, I'm bringing a gimbal. And guess what? We got the roll top, baby. We got the roll top. So in the roll top, I'm gonna put my gimbal. I'm also going to put my tech bag in the roll top. And I'm putting the display in the bag with the camera gear. Whew. That's mostly what I'm bringing to DC with me and how I'm bringing it. I'm super excited about bringing the Provoke. It is my first time taking it on a trip, so I'm excited to see how it carries. I'm gonna tell you all about this gear, how it worked out for me. Did I make the right choices? Did I have everything that I needed on the trip? I have made it actually to my gate. If you've ever been to Atlanta, you know the airport can be kind of hectic, but the Provoke bag actually worked very well. I was able to get my laptop out very quickly, um, make it through the security check, and um, put it on my bag. I'll show you in a second and roll it on. I need it because this thing kind of is a little heavy. <laughs> but here we go. So when you're doing real travel, that's when you actually start using some features that you're like, oh, it's nice to have. But when you actually need it, like this strap here to connect it to the bag, when you actually need it, it is super nice to have. Also something else I didn't really use much until this moment was this zipper up here. Threw my lens cap in it. I got a little cloth up here pin just little things you need to do quickly it actually was very very helpful so yeah accessory straps coming in super handy right now just using it to hold my sweater on a bag as I'm sitting here waiting to board also and I got my hat here hooked to the bag using a hero clip I'm sold on these things when I travel I love to have a hero clip and actually you'll see I actually have two so helpful to have so helpful to have oh yeah you know I said earlier I don't use side access much well you caught me I'm using it today guys and it's very 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 helpful Alright, so good morning. It is day two of the conference. I've made it up to Washington DC safely with all of my gear in the Provoke pack. I can say this has been a great travel buddy. It was able to fit under the seat and I was able to bring it on a plane with me. No problems at all. So this size for travel, for airplane travel, the Provoke Light is fantastic. As far as my camera choice, the R6 Mark II has been doing everything that I needed to do. Um, everything. I mean, no complaints about it. Video's been great. Pictures have been great. Not once have I regretted leaving the R5 at home. Now, as far as my lens choices, I did, I think I made a mistake. <laughs> I should have brought the 70 to 200 with me. I left it at home simply because it's so big and heavy and I thought maybe I could get by without it, but I can say I have missed having the 70 to 200 in the bag, but I've actually been using the 50 because that's the longest focal length I have with me right now when I normally would have used like a 70 to 200 and that's like for some landscape shots. But the 15 to 35 has been great. I'm actually shooting on it right now 
and I'm about to take a little photo walk and take some pictures with the 15 to 35 so great to have that one along with me and uh, yeah it's been a great trip so far the gear's been holding up great and I've been having a great time using it and if anything for my photo walk I have found my favorite restaurant Chipotle baby <laughs> and this guy poor guy fell down down in the sand let me run down there so you can see the scale. This, this thing is huge. So traveling with camera gear can be challenging, but when you have the right gear and you're doing it the right way, it becomes transparent and you can just do what you need to do. And I will say that for this trip, I almost brought the perfect kit with me. First of all, the camera, the R6 Mark II did everything that I needed it to do. I got plenty of event pics, plenty of video, I took portraits, headshots, headshots were awesome. The only time I regretted not having the R5 was there was a um, event going on on stage. I was in the front row, but even being in the front row, I only had a 50 millimeter. I needed my 70 to 200, um, but I only had a 50. But I thought, you know what, I'll shoot it with the 50 and then in post, I'll just crop in. When I was in post, I remembered I didn't have a 45 megapixel file. I only had 24 and it did make a difference um, because sometimes that 45 megapixels can, can save you when you're in a situation that is not ideal. So other than that though, the R6 was amazing. It is a true hybrid camera. I was able to get video. I was able to get the pictures and I felt like I'd never missed a beat getting everything that I needed to capture. So, R6 Mark II, amazing camera for the trip. Oh yes, and the R6 Mark II is also a great walk around camera. I walked around all of Washington DC with it and you know the form factor is not that big, especially when paired with the 35 millimeter 1.8. The lens choice, it worked out just fine. Um, the 15 to 35 shined when I was doing video. And it also was great for um, when I was doing some architectural photography and also some landscape stuff. So phenomenal lens. The 15 to 35 did its job. The 50, the 50 showed out, y'all. Um, I wanted to do a quick headshot session. I had no lighting with me at all, so it was just the light that was in the building. But the 50 made the headshots I took in the building look professional, sharp. It just turns ordinary pictures into events. So the 50 millimeter, 1.2, RF baby, RF, it showed out and it was amazing for the trip. Now, the NVP lens, once again, people, is the 35. Um, I didn't use it too much for the job part, but the fun part, it stayed on the camera. I had a chance to visit a lot of museums, and I don't like using the strap most of the time. I pretty much just walk around holding the camera, and it's light, it's sharp, and it just gets the shot. The 35 was a joy. I got so many pictures just walking around Washington with it in my hand the whole time. The 35 was definitely the MVP lens of the trip. Now, the most missed lens was the 70 to 200. I didn't bring it because it's heavy and it's big. 
So I just left it at home thinking I can get by without it. I made a mistake. <laughs> I, needed, I needed my 70 to 200 when I was shooting things on a stage and I was really disappointed that I did not have it with me. So um, I think I've learned a lesson that no matter what, that 70 to 200 just has to be on the camera. Let's talk about the bag, the Wonder Provoke Light. This is an awesome bag. First of all, you know I love the color. I love the way the bag looks. Just an awesome bag. Um, it carried everything I needed and more. And the MVP of the bag is the roll top. The roll top is a lifesaver. It holds so, there's no limits. I've never really gotten to the point where it's like, I can't put more into the roll top. When it really saved the day was I had to go to a museum. I didn't have to go, but I went to a museum. I had a gimbal in the accessory straps and at the museum, they're like, you can't have this strap to your bag. It has to be inside or you gotta check it in. You know I did not want to have to check this in. So I just broke the gimbal down and I just put it in the roll top. It actually fit, thank God. And I was able to enjoy the museum simply because I had the roll top. I was constantly using the roll top throughout the trip to throw in things that I needed and to take things out on the fly. So the roll top actually just was so wonderful. I love the roll top, I'm sold on it. Now, the one drawback I can say with the bag is the side access. Like I said earlier, some I don't use a whole lot, but on this trip, I really needed it and I used it quite a bit. Um, and I found that the side access just is not very accessible. <laughs> the main issue with it is this angle that's on the opening that makes it hard to have a smooth zip. So it always gets caught on this corner and you sort of got to finagle it, grab and use two hands to, to, to get it unzipped. And at some times I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to open up the clamshell. Clamshell zippers are first in class, but that side access zipper because of that angle makes it so hard to open and just sort of the way that it is, it's kind of hard to get the camera in and out. I found myself changing the settings on my camera accidentally a lot simply because I was just trying to get it out of that side access piece. I think maybe if it were a smaller camera, maybe it would be easier to get it in and out. But the ones that I wanted to bring in and out most of the time was the R6 Mark II with the 15 to 35 on it. And you know, I just felt like I had to do some work. And then when it comes out, it's upside down and it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not a, just a quick thing. You want the side access to be a quick thing and it's not a quick thing. However, overall, the Wondered Provoke Light was just awesome. And I will say this, it was light. There were several times um, on the trip when I was walking, I had to look in the mirror to make sure everything was still on there because it didn't feel that heavy. And I walked over seven miles. I got like over 15,000 steps walking through Washington, D.C and it just felt great. Now, one thing I will say is you have to do the chest straps because sometimes that strap will slide off, but if you do the chest straps, chest strap on the Wonder Provoke Light, you can really walk a lot. Um, the only thing I wish, I wish it had load lifters. If it had load lifters, the comfort would be perfect and it would start to rival the Shimoda bags, but um, it does not have the load lifter, so it's sort of sags in the back a little bit but it's still comfortable enough for me to do a seven hour walk through Washington DC and not feel uncomfortable with the bag. Oh I also got some compliments on the bag. <laughs> so the conference I was at I was like man that's a really nice bag and the, the, the nicest compliment I got was in one of the museums uh, you don't have to check your bags when they can't when you come in and the, the security was actually admiring a bag. He was saying, oh, you, you're a professional. I can see this is not a regular camera bag. You know, he was just admiring it as he was checking through it and, you know, making sure I wasn't trying to bring anything crazy in. <laughs> so I love the compliments. You know, it always makes you feel good when you know you got a good looking bag. So all in all, I was able to do everything that I needed to do on this trip from video to photography to just carrying everything around and then just doing a whole lot of shooting for fun 
And while I was in DC, something big happened. We hit a thousand subscribers, y'all. A thousand subscribers. I can't thank you enough. I cannot thank you enough. Um, without you, of course, you know this would not be possible. So everyone who subscribed, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You have no idea how much it means to me to be successful on YouTube. Something that I've always just wanted to do. So thank you so much for subscribing. Stay tuned. Um, and I'm looking forward to growing together. But we'll go ahead and end it like this. You know what? Wherever you're traveling to and whatever you're shooting with, I just hope that you're using it while you're on these journeys, and I hope that you enjoy it. I want to thank you all one more time, and you all have a great day. And until next time, peace.